Hi everyone, assignment eight of distance learning. Hope you're having a good day. So today we're going to continue with functions. It's the second lesson. So let's just start. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. Literally just in squiggly brackets, any ordered pairs, any coordinates. You already know that the domain, that the domain is the possible x values. So let's list all the values of the domain here. Domain can be abbreviated D subscript x. So the domain is all the x values. So that would be 2, 3, negative 2. And while there's another 3, you don't write them twice. So you don't write repeats. Okay, um, the range, which you already know, is the possible y values. The abbreviation for that is R subscript y. So the y values from here are 3, 6, 0, and negative 8. Guys, that's literally it. We want to be able to know that the x's are known to be called the domain and the y's are known to be called the, <clears throat> the range. All right, so then each relation is a function for each element in the domain, there is only one element in the range. So the easiest way to explain that, no x values repeat, okay? Okay, so this is an example of a function. The x's are the only ones that matter. Check it out none of them repeat. Each element in the domain only has one element in the range. So let's determine if each ordered pair, all these relations, a, b, and c, are functions. Explain your reasoning. If it's a function, we don't want x to repeat. So seriously, that's all I look at. Check it out. There's a 3 in each, again, the number 3. So this is not a function. I'm going to say the x value of 3 repeats. It says explain your reasoning, so we have to give a statement. Okay, is this a function? I'm only looking at the x values. Again, <laughs> not a function. The x value of 6 repeats, or you can actually restate the formal definition saying each element in the domain does not have one element in the range. I don't prefer this explanation because it takes so long to write out. So you could just simply say the x value of 6 repeats. And then for C, again, we're just looking at the x values. None of them repeat. So it's a function. No x value repeats. All right. So that was ordered pairs, coordinates. Next is mapping diagrams. So this is just a different way to display a coordinate or coordinates. Meaning, if you look Part A says, write out the list of ordered pairs from the mapping diagram above. So the x value, which is always on the left, the left bubble is always x, has an arrow that goes to negative 3. So negative 3, negative 3. The 2 has an arrow that goes to the 1, 
but it also has an arrow that goes to the four. And finally, the four has an arrow that goes to the three. So now, determine whether the relation is a function. It is not, because the x value of two repeats. So, if you're the type of student who doesn't want to have to visualize or actually make ordered pairs, then if the number on the left has two, excuse me, two or more arrows coming from it, because it is possible to have more than two arrows come from one of the domain values, it's not a function. <coughs> excuse me. So number three, we're going to create one. Create a mapping diagram to determine if the relation is a function. So you don't have to put them in numerical order. I'm just telling you that now. So I'm not. As I see them, I'm going to write them. So 3, 8, don't forget, domain is x, range is y. And I like to cross them out so I don't, you know, duplicate or anything. 9, 3, I already have, I don't write that twice, and then negative 4. And then I have negative 2, 1, 2, 3, and 0. Okay, um, you don't have to put them in numerical order. When I make my mapping diagram, the 3 and the negative 2 go together. The 8 and the 1 go together. The 9 and the 2 go together. The three, excuse me, the 3 and the 3 go together. And the negative 4 and the 0 go together. So, it is not a function because, if you notice, the 3 has two arrows going to it, right? So the x value of 3 repeats. Me, Miss Mulligan, we really do like the simplicity of this explanation, but it's good to know the real definition that says for each element in the domain, domain, there is only one element in the range. Okay, let's keep going. Determine if the following functions, the following are functions and explain why or why not. So if you guys would notice, there's only one arrow coming from each of these, so it is a function. The x's don't repeat. Please notice, nothing goes with the C. This is your domain, this is your range, it doesn't matter. They don't all have to be used. This guy, is this guy a function? Well, first of all, there's a, first of all, there's a lot of business going on over here with the three. But that, the Y values, don't impact our decision if it's a function. Check it out. The negative one and the one have more than one line or arrow going from it. So this is not a function. There's multiple x values that are repeating. So I'm just going to say x values of negative one and one repeat. Womp womp. Okay, so that's your mapping diagrams. Let's do a couple more. Determine if the following are functions and explain why, why not. So, one arrow, one arrow, two arrows, not a function. X value of six repeats. Okay. This, I don't know what they're doing here. They're just making curvy curves. Um, no matter how they draw it, the x's are not repeating. So this is a function. X's don't repeat. You getting the gist of it now? Hopefully. So you just want to make sure the x values are not repeating. And then for C and D, we have some t-charts. We have a vertical t-chart. We have a horizontal t-chart. Don't look at the y's. Who cares? You could get dramatic and cross them out. The y's don't impact the answer. Do your x values in C repeat? 
No, they do not. So this is a function. Your x's don't repeat. All right. And D. You can get dramatic. You could cross out your y's. They have no impact on the answer that you're answering, um, the question that you're answering. Are the x's repeating? They are. Like every x value is repeating. So this is not a function. You want to say it's not a function. x values of 1, 2, and 3 repeat. Can you hear my children arguing in the background? Gotta love it. All right. So we've done some mapping diagrams. We've done some um, ordered pairs. We've done some T charts. We're moving on to the vertical line test. It is abbreviated as the VLT. So what it says, if a vertical line passes through more than one point of the graph, then the x value is repeated and the relation is not a function. So keep that in mind. So determine if the relation is a function using the vertical line test. So what you're doing is you're plotting the points. So 0, negative 2, 1, negative 2, negative 3, 1, and negative 2, 0. So then what we do in a case like this is we don't plot the, uh, excuse me, we don't connect the dots. What you can do is, is draw a vertical line through every point. Each point only has the line going through it once. It is a function because of that and you would say it passes the vertical line test. Or some of you may be sitting here saying, ugh, why did you make us graph it? I literally saw it was a function in the beginning because that was the question. You had to graph it. <laughs> so just graph it. All right, if you need more clarification, here's another one. Is the following relation a function? So I'm plotting the points, 0, 2, 1, negative 1 negative 1, 4, hello, it would be helpful if you could see my graphing, huh? 0, 2, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 4, 0, negative 3, and 2, 1. So here's what I'm talking about. Put a vertical line through everything. Check it out. What's happening here is This vertical line right here is passing through two of the points. And there's no shocker to you that it's passing through the x value of 0 twice. Does that make sense? Like now you have like an actual visual. So that graph reinforces that this is not a function. You already knew that because the x values of 0 repeated, but the graph reinforces that. So Showing the work graphically means you have to use the VLT in your answer. So you would say not a function fails the VLT. And yes, it's okay to say VLT. It is universally accepted in math that the vertical line test is abbreviated to VLT. Now, who's hungry and who wants a BLT? Mm-hmm, happens every time. Okay. So we're at the home stretch here. Last page that I have here. Are the following relations functions? Justify your answer. So write yourself a note. If you're given graphs, use the vertical line test. Okay, if you're given graphs, use the VLT. What I mean is, I just use my fancy markers. I'm so fancy, right? I'm um, just at my daughter's desk. <laughs> Using all her supplies. Okay, 
you can make a vertical line as many times as you want. That vertical line is only going to touch your graph once. It's going to touch once here, it touches once here, it touches once here, one here. So it is a function justifying my answer. It passes the VLT. And now I'm writing in blue. Okay. You can draw as many vertical lines to test the vertical line test as you want, but this vertical line touches twice, this vertical line touches twice, and this vertical line touches twice. Meaning, it is not a function, which means your x's are repeating, it fails the vertical line test. Okay, hopefully you're getting the hang of it. Here's another pair, um, excuse me, core, um, I can't talk, another set of ordered pairs. Put a vertical line through this guy, touches once. Put a vertical line through these guys, oh yeah, it touches twice. I'm stopping. It fails the VLT. That's not your answer. Your answer is it's not a function. Fails your VLT is your answer, excuse me, is your reason, not a function is the answer. And then the last problem of the day. Draw as many vertical lines as you want. The vertical lines you draw are only going to touch the U-shape, the parabola, once. So this is a function. It passes your reason, your justification, is it passes the vertical line test. Again, if you're given graphs, use the vertical line test. It's, it's efficient. It's the quickest method. All right, so then some notes down here. As a nice little review, you could read through those. It's everything I've said. You don't need to listen to my beautiful voice anymore. I miss you guys very much. I'm hoping that everything's going well on your end. Um, don't ignore my messages. Please send me a message. Reply to me. I miss you all. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.